What time is it? Kindergarten first grade kids, welcome back. Today's Gerald McDermott story is Arrow to the Sun, so let's get right into it. We have another Gerald McDermott story called Arrow to the Sun, a Pueblo Indian tale. And this actually won the gold medal for the Caldecott that year. Arrow to the Sun, a Pueblo Indian tale, adapted and illustrated by Gerald McDermott. Oh, that's gonna come into play. That's the symbol of the sun. Long ago, the Lord of the Sun sent the spark of life to Earth. It traveled down the rays of the sun through the heavens, and it came to the Pueblo. There it entered the house of a young maiden. In this way, the boy came into the world of men. He lived and grew and played in the Pueblo, but the other boys would not let him join their games. Where is your father? they asked. You have no father. They mocked him and chased him away. The boy and his mother were sad. Mother, he said one day, I must look for my father. No matter where he is, I must find him. So the boy left home. He traveled through the world of men and came to Corn Planter. Can you lead me to my father? He asked. Corn Planter said nothing, but continued to tend his crops. The boy went to Pot Maker. Can you lead me to my father? Asked the boy. Pot Maker said nothing, but continued to make her clay pots. Then the boy went to Arrow Maker, who was a wise man. Can you lead me to my father? Arrow Maker did not answer, but because he was wise, he saw that the boy had come from the sun, so he created a special arrow. The boy became the arrow. Arrow Maker fitted the boy to his bow and drew it. The boy flew into the heavens, and this way the boy traveled to the sun. When the boy saw the mighty sun lord, he cried, Father, it is I, your son. Perhaps you are my son, the sun lord replied. Perhaps you are not. You must prove yourself. You must pass through the four chambers of ceremony, the kiva of lions, the kiva of serpents, the kiva of bees, and the kiva of lightning. The boy was not afraid. Father, he said, I will endure these trials. So he went down into the kiva of lions and tamed the lions. Then he went down the ladder into the kiva of serpents and made them chase their tails. And then he went down into the kiva of bees. And I don't know, turned them, turned them into honey, got some honey. And then he went into the kiva of lightning and oh no, looks like he's getting electrocuted. When the boy came from the Kiva of Lightning, he was transformed. He was filled with the power of the sun. The father and his son rejoiced. Now you must return to earth, my son, and bring my spirit to the world of men. Once again, the boy became the arrow. When the arrow reached the earth, the boy emerged and went to the Pueblo. The people celebrated his return in the dance of life. The end. So, to make our arrow to the sun picture, to make our picture inspired by arrow to the sun, I'm just gonna use a piece of drawing paper and some black paper. I'm going to cut the black paper. My arrow to the sun boy, knee, my arrow to the sun character needs two arms, two legs, a body, and a head. So I'm just going to cut this black square up into black rectangles. I'm going to glue the body and the head. It looks a lot like a lowercase i. Now depending on what actions you want your character doing, uh, you can leave some of these rectangles unfolded. 
I'm going to fold all of them so they look like the letter V. I could glue them and make it look like he's doing jumping jacks. I can bend the arms in opposite directions. I can move the legs, make it look like he's running. Put his arms by his side, make it look like he's jumping. Play around with the positioning before you make up your mind and then glue it. When you glue it, make sure that you glue on one side completely. And also when you glue it, make sure that you don't glue the bendy joints onto the body. Your elbows and your knees are not connected to your body. That's a common mistake. So make sure you just pick one end of the arms and legs and glue that onto the body. Once my Arrow to the Sun character is glued and looking good, I'm going to decorate my Arrow to the Sun character. Because it's black paper, I like to use a bright color. You could use a white colored pencil or a white crayon, a yellow colored pencil or a yellow crayon. I happen to have a silver colored pencil. And with my silver colored pencil, I can go ahead and draw lots of decorations on this character. Draw the geometric shapes on his arms and his legs and his headband. Put geometric shapes on his head. Geometric shapes on his legs. Draw the symbol of the sun that is from the book. I'll take a black crayon, add feathers to his headband. And once I'm done with that, I want to decorate the drawing paper in the background with anything that happened in the book. I'll take the brown crayon and draw the ground, some pueblos, some ladders going into the pueblo. I will outline the ground and the inside of the pueblos with orange. I'll color the rest of that in with yellow. I'll take the orange and the yellow and make a sun up in the sky. I can draw the arrow coming down the rays of the sun and draw the Lord of the Sun up in the sun with his bow and arrow. Oops, my Pueblos need doors. And this picture is just one of many things that happen in the story. That's the beginning of the story. But you could always decorate your background to show the kids picking on him in the Pueblo, him asking pot maker for help, him going into the cornfield to ask corn maker, him going to Arrow Maker and becoming the Arrow, him traveling back to the sun, him doing all the Kiva steps, like fighting the lions or the serpents or the bees, him getting electrocuted and becoming colorful with all the colors of the sun. Have fun, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Here's a pro tip. Here's a pro tip, whenever you're doing a big painting, if you are using opaque paint like I am here, you want to work in layers. And typically, most artists will start with the background first. You have to know what you have planned in your head first before you can paint. But most artists like to start with elements that are super far away first, like the sky. Um, pick your colors for the sky in the background and paint that. Then what you would do is slowly work your way forward towards the audience. So one of the last things that you would paint is whatever objects are closest to the viewer, objects that are in the foreground. So you would typically work the farthest elements in the background, uh, finish the background, do objects that are in the middle ground, and then lastly do objects that are in the foreground. We didn't do this with this mural, and if you were to ask me why, it would be because we were in a hurry to get this ready for different fifth grade classes to paint, so we definitely did not do this in the order that we should have, but live and learn. Okay, see you next time. <laughs> Bonus points! Kindergarten, first grade, today's book, Arrow to the Sun, one Gerald McDermott, a Caldecott for illustration. For your bonus point, you can tell me either what year the book was published, or you could tell me what year it won the Caldecott. Here's a hint, it won the Caldecott the year after it was published. Think about that. See you next week, bye.